Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tamlin and this is Sewn on the Tine. And I'm here today with a bit of a catch up video. I feel like I've been a little bit absent for a couple of weeks. I haven't put out a Friday Sews for a couple of weeks. Things have just been a little bit hectic. <laughs> so I did put out my Sew Hilly Jane unboxing yesterday, so that was on Saturday. And I actually filmed it on Monday morning. So as you can see, things are just hectic and busy, which is good. But it just means that I'm not as present as I would like to be. And I'm really sorry about that. But I'm here today and I'm here with a bit of a catch up video, a bit of a haul. What I got at the Knitting and Stitching show in Harrogate on Friday and a few other random bits, really. Before we get started with all of that, on my mannequin is the starting of a cello top by Closet Core Patterns. I'm doing a collaboration with the very lovely Emma from So Do It Emma and Adele from So For Serenity. We're working on the cello top and the Pietra pants. That is my cello top wearable toile, hopefully, before I move on to my precious fabric. So that is basically the front bodice piece with the darts sewn in and then I've just pinned it onto a mannequin ready to move on to the next step which hopefully I might do after filming this. I'll tell you what I'm wearing. So on the bottom half is just an old pair of jeans and they're pretty muddy now because Taylor and I went out for a walk this afternoon and it was very muddy and he collected lots of sticks and put his muddy hands all over me which was great fun but I'm looking a little bit dishevelled, <laughs> but I'll stand up and show you my jumper because this is a me made. This is the Helen's Closet Jackson Pullover, which is my absolute favourite jumper pattern. A lot of people have been asking me about this recently because I wear it a lot. So my grey waffle version, I wear all the time, like literally at least once a week, maybe twice. It depends how quickly I can get it washed. <laughs> So that one's in frequent rotation. And then this week at my Sotoon Social, I was making this version and a black cable knit version, which I wore to the Knitting and Stitching show, or I had it with me on Friday. I wore it when I was outside, but it was too hot to wear inside. So yeah, I just love this pattern. I am going to do a video soon on my November makes. So I will go into a lot more detail about the pattern itself but I'll stand up and show you. The fabric is a brushed jacquard viscose jersey knit <laughs> that we sell in first for fabrics. So I'll just stand up and show you, but also the neckband and cuffs and hemband are just done with a black ribbing fabric. So there you go. So this is the version that's a little bit cropped. I mean, it's not particularly cropped. It does come down then if I pull the hem band out Just in terms of the length of it, my tummy button's there. <laughs> so it's not like actually cropped. But I just absolutely love it. It's got a slightly dropped shoulder. So the shoulder seam is here, which I really, really like. The cuffs are quite short, which I like. And it just, the style just really suits me, I think. And I love it. So I recommend this pattern to everyone that I speak to, really. I know that people are often trying to find the ultimate jumper. And for me, this is it. I think I've got... at least six now and another one cut out. I just love it and it whizzes up in no time. So moving on, I have got a big bag of stuff here. The top part of the bag is stuff that has come through the post over the last few weeks. And then the bottom part of the bag is knitting and stitching show haul. So I'll start off with some random bits. I bought this recently, which is a really cute snowman fabric. It's a stuff of Denmark French terry, so it's looped back. So it's quite lightweight for a French terry. It's not like a thick sweatshirt in fabric, but it's just got these lovely snowmen all over it in different directions. And this is just going to be a sweatshirt for Taylor. And you can probably guess which pattern I'm going to use. Three, two, one. The Brindle and Twig Vintage sweatshirt. I knew you'd get it. <laughs> But I just thought it was adorable and I love all of the vibrant hats that they've got on. The hats and mittens are really cute and brightly coloured. Taylor is going to love it because he's so excited about Christmas. He was two in July, so last year, obviously we made it lovely for him, but he didn't really understand. 
this year he understands so santa snowmen he just he loves it all so that's going to be a really cute jumper for him and i just got this rib to go with it so they're both from first for fabrics then I had a message from the very lovely Adam from Adam Sews to say he'd been watching one of my videos and heard that Taylor was really into under the sea and ocean life and he had some French terry in his stash that he wondered if I would like for Taylor and I jumped at the chance because it's adorable and I asked him if he wanted some money for it and he said no. He didn't even ask me for any money towards postage, he just sent me this and it's adorable. So thank you so much Adam. Taylor is going to love this. He actually saw it and got very excited. So it's got all sorts of sea life on it, really cute jellyfish and things like that. I think there's about a metre. So I'm going to think about what to make with that. I don't know if I just want to make another jumper. It might be like a onesie or something like that. Yeah, he's going to absolutely love it. I'd like to get that sewn up quite quickly while he's still fully into the ocean life. He might decide after a while that his tastes change and he starts to like something else instead. So yeah, I plan on getting that sewn up quite quickly. So thank you so much, Adam. That was really, really kind of you. Another fabric that I've got to make something for Taylor was one that I picked up in a D-stash. The gorgeous Angela from Devon Thread Tales was having a bit of a D-stash and I saw this on there and I couldn't resist it. You'll know that I've been D-stashing over the last few months quite aggressively and really cutting down my stash but I just saw this and thought Taylor would love it because he's a little bit obsessed with Santa. So Angela just had the remnants of this left over from a project and it's just a jersey fabric. I think it's probably a polyester jersey, which I wouldn't usually buy for Taylor, but I couldn't resist it. And I just thought for a little t-shirt or long sleeve top to wear over the festive period, I think that'll be perfect for him. Adorable. So yeah, thank you, Angela, for de-stashing that. Taylor's gonna love that one too. A little while ago on Instagram, I was seeing this fabric everywhere, this rainbow seersucker fabric. It's a Pigeon Wishes fabric and I was seeing it everywhere and I loved it. But it was at the time when I was really trying hard not to buy fabric and uh, yeah, I was being really good so I didn't buy it. However, on one of Pigeon Wishes Instagram stories or something, I think I liked it or said like love the fabric or something. And the very wonderful Meg, who runs Pigeon Wishes along with her husband, sent me a message and said, I'll send you some. And I couldn't believe it. I didn't expect that she would send it to me for nothing, but she did. And yeah, she sent me like three meters of this beautiful rainbow checkerboard seersucker. It's such a generous thing for her to do. Absolutely no obligation or anything for me to share or do anything with it. She just wanted to send it to me and I'm so, so grateful. So thank you, Meg, if you're watching. You're probably not, but <laughs> just in case. Uh, but I just adore it. I think I'll probably put this away till the warmer months. I feel like this could be a really fun outfit for the spring, summer. Maybe like a co-ord set that I can wear at a music festival or something like that. Not that I go to many, I go to one <laughs> every year. <laughs> But, you know, I think it's more got summer vibes rather than winter vibes. So that will be put away. But it was just such a lovely, kind thing for her to do. And yeah, if you've got any ideas of what I should make with that, do let me know. It's just so fun. I love it. And in the package as well, there were some beautiful buttons. So just those ones. They do the most stunning buttons. So I will link to Pigeon Wishes down below and you can go and have a little look at their incredible range. They're so pretty. So yeah, that was a really kind thing to receive through the post. I was very happy with that. And then one more random thing before I move on to my knitting and stitching show haul. So I love, love, love a scented candle. I love having a candle burning in the house. It just makes me feel all cozy and warm and happy. Like it really relaxes me really helps with my mood and with my sort of feeling of calm having a candle on a cup of tea and reading a book it's just yeah 
that's just my vibe. So my very favourite candle company, Albion Candle Co. I first discovered them on Instagram. I don't know how, somebody must have shared them, I think, but I bought one of their candles and then just absolutely fell in love. I love their design of their like labels and everything, just their aesthetic. I love their Instagram. I love their scents that they do. Everything I've had from them has been incredible. I've purchased many a thing from them and my husband has bought things from them for me. I love them. So imagine my disappointment when a couple of months ago they announced that they were closing their business or taking an extended break from their business. I was very upset. I bought a couple of things in their closing down sale. <laughs> but I think that they do it as a side hustle. I think they're a husband and wife team, correct me if I'm wrong, but they do it as a side hustle and their main jobs needed to be the priority and they couldn't keep on top of the business as well as their jobs. So they had to take a break. But a couple of weeks ago, they announced they were coming back. Yeah, I was so excited, honestly, so, so, so excited. So I've been sort of looking at what they've got and putting it on my Christmas list and, you know, making sure that I'm going to get some this year. And then they sent me a message out of the blue and said, would I like to choose something from their website to receive just in return for a little shout out, either on my Instagram or YouTube or whatever. And obviously I was delighted to do that because I've been a big supporter of their business anyway and have bought many a thing from them. So I was thrilled. So they have come back with lots of candles and their signature scents, but they've also got a couple of new scents for the festive season. And I decided to try those because why not try something new? So here it is. There's a bit of the packaging sticking out. Let's rub that, uh, rip that off. So this is a little set called Winter Walk two 20 hour burn time natural soy wax candles and the scents are mulled berries and snowfall i love them they're based in manchester i believe <laughs> yeah i think they're based in manchester so you get a little card in there which tells you how to look after your candles and then this is the two candles that would just be a perfect gift for somebody so snowfall is I'm going to butcher the name of this. Ylang Ylang, <laughs> clove and florals. So, mm. oh, I mean, that's probably going to be really annoying because you can't smell it, but that is divine. Mm. Lovely. And then I've had these for about two weeks now and I haven't, opened them or started burning them yet because I wanted to save them to share with you. It's been very hard. This one is mulled berries, juniper, elderberry and cranberry. I love mulled wine. Oh yeah, that beautiful berry scent. It's just, that's going to be incredible. So as soon as I go downstairs from filming this, I'm going to be burning one of those. So do check them out. I will link to them down below. As I said, I've been a big supporter of their business for a long time. So thank you so much, Albion Candle Company, for sending me those because I was delighted. Oh, I told a fib. I just found two more things in this bag that weren't from the Knitting and Stitching show. I just wanted to share a pattern that I picked up recently. I bought this from First for Fabrics where I work, but it's a wardrobe by me, a zip up sweater. I love this style of sweater. I want to make one for Sam, but I also want to make one for me. So... I just picked that up. It looks like a great make. I think Elle from Elle and the Stitches and also one of the hosts of the Tipsy Sewist podcast, I think she has made this and has raved about the pattern on their podcast, I believe. <laughs> Hope I haven't got that wrong. But yeah, that looks like a great pattern. And then I've also picked up these Clover loop pressing bars. I saw Sandeep from System and Taka share these on Instagram ages ago and I remember kind of putting it into my mind that I must pick them up at some point and then completely forgot about them. Then Sam from Purple Sewing Cloud shared them a couple of weeks ago and I went on and ordered them. So they're a way of you popping your 
loops they they go into your loops if you're making like a loop for a strap or something for a garment you can put these in and then you hold on to that to iron them rather than having to use your fingers and potentially burning yourself it's just a way of basically pressing your loops and your straps in a safer way and it also helps with neatness and keeping the seam correct because often the seam can go wavy when you're trying to press it and there's different widths there as well so i'll link to those below but i think they're going to be a really useful tool right knitting and stitching show so you'll know if you watch my channel regularly or saw one of my videos where i shared my experience. I went to the knitting and stitching show at Alexandra Palace a couple of months ago. I've never been to any of the shows and then I've been to two in the space of a few months. <laughs> but this one I decided to organise a trip down for my Sew Tuners. So Sew Tune is my social sewing group that I host in Newcastle and I basically put a call out to my lovely ladies that come along. They are all ladies at the moment. I would love some men to come along. Anyone is welcome. But at the moment, they are ladies. So I put a call out and said, would anybody like to come? And 12, so 13, including me, 12 ladies decided that they wanted to come. So I set about organising a trip to Harrogate we originally I thought maybe we'd get a bus but then we ended up just all doing our own thing really a group of us got the train more on that later not a fun time <laughs> but many of the ladies just went in cars so they went in like twos or threes they went in cars and we spent the day there basically we had a lovely lunch at Piccolino in Harrogate I would highly recommend it really great service beautiful food yeah really lovely and only literally two minutes from the convention centre where the knitting stitching show was held. So, the day. I set off really early. I think I left the house at about 20 past seven. Met up with the ladies at the train station that were getting the train with me. One of them, Morgan, didn't make it in time, so I had to drive down, bless her. The rest of us got the train. Our connecting train from York to Harrogate was cancelled. Not great. But we only had an extra half hour to wait, so it wasn't too bad. We got to Harrogate, walked down to the show, met Morgan outside, and in we went. Well, uh, I didn't cope very well initially because it was so busy. Now, I didn't feel like that at the London show. And I don't know if it's because Ali Pali is such a big building with high ceilings and it feels very airy. Harrogate some of the ceilings are very low so a couple of the rooms had very low ceilings and it made me feel very claustrophobic and anxious and it was very 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 busy. So we arrived I think around 11 a.m maybe a little bit after that and it was so busy I really struggled if I'm honest and we'd kind of split off by this point we'd arranged that we would just go off and do our own thing so I was on my own and I just didn't like it and in the corner of my eye I spotted a little bar area well a seating area yes they did Prosecco but they also you could just go and sit there you could you know do whatever and it was just so quiet and calm over there it was right in the corner of one of the halls and I thought right I'll just go and sit there and just gather compose myself just you know so I did just sat there for a little while and kind of watched what was going on and then a couple of my lovely ladies from So Tune spotted me and they came over and had a chat and that immediately just made me feel better and more at ease and after that I decided right I'll get up and have a little wander around again I just found it really busy I really did so I kind of dipped in and out I kept having to find quiet spaces and calm moments and I managed to a little bit but a lot of the stalls you couldn't even get near. It was so busy. Yeah, it was. It was really busy. Anyway, I managed to get to a couple of stalls. I had a little chat with Victoria from Little Rosy Cheeks, which was lovely, and Louise from Ethel and Joan, which was lovely, and some others. And then it was nearly time for lunch. Um, 
we were going for lunch at half one so just before we were going to go for lunch i wanted to find felicity fabrics because i blog for those lovely ladies and i wanted to find them i've never met them before so i did i found them and that was really nice had a little chat with them and then we went for lunch and as i said that was wonderful after lunch quite a few of the ladies from so Tune decided to just go home so they were happy at that point i hadn't bought anything at that point except two packs of labels from little rosy cheeks so i did want to go back in and have a good look around at the stalls and thankfully when i went back in it was calm and quiet and lovely so i could get around and have a look at the stalls and it was really nice and i did make some purchases so i will share those with you the journey home was a bit chaotic because again one of our trains was cancelled as were many many trains that evening but we got home we had to stand in a very cramped crowded train but we got home and that's all that matters <laughs> we were fine so yeah all in all a great day i did enjoy it i would go again i would maybe do a couple of things differently but yeah i did enjoy it so i'll share with you what i got oh what i wore for the show as you'll know if you watch my videos regularly i was making something specially for the show which was the size me sewing vn dress i picked this up at the london knitting and stitching show from donna who runs size me sewing i just really loved the style of it and then i made it and i wore it I, yeah i was sewing until about 11 pm the night before i went but that's fine don't we all do that <laughs> I love this pattern. I really, really love this pattern. I will definitely be making another one. Sorry, I was just kind of looking at the size range, but I was chatting to Donna at the show. She was at the Harrogate show and she spotted me and I had a lovely, lovely chat with her. We had a photo taken, which I'll put up here. Yeah, Donna's just so lovely and I'm very excited about a couple of her patterns that she's got in the works for next year. But she also mentioned she's increasing her block so her size range is going to increase which is great size range already is pretty wide i think it goes up the body measurement chart goes up to a 53 inch hip and a 50 inch bust so that's a lot better than many companies but she is increasing which is fantastic to hear but yes i would highly recommend this pattern i will talk more about the make and everything in my november makes video but oh the fabric was from rainbow fabrics by the way what i did end up buying then so the first thing that i bought was a couple of packs of labels from little rosy cheeks i spotted these as they're new i think i own pretty much every label that she's released but i spotted these ones that are new and i wanted to get them so these ones say dream it want it go for it are really cute and then these ones i just love because i love this checkerboard whole like retro thing they say make it happen so i picked those up and then victoria also gave me this little ruler which is a ruler that helps with placing your label so it's see-through so you can do your exact measurements to get it centralized or you know wherever you want it so she gave me this as a little freebie and asked me to let her know my thoughts on it once I've used it. So thank you, Victoria. That was much appreciated. So I did go to the show with a kind of an idea of what I wanted. I wanted a special fabric to make a dress for my birthday. I didn't end up getting that because I didn't find anything that I really liked. I wanted a viscose, but I wanted something a bit special and maybe sparkly or just a bit different. And I just didn't find anything that I wanted. But I also wanted some sweatshirt fabric, probably to make more of these jumpers. And Higgs and Higgs was one that I wanted to go back to. I didn't get to them until right at the end of the day because they were just so busy every time I went over. But I did manage to get there in the end and I chose this beautiful knitted fabric. I thought I was going to get the black, but then I went for a bit of colour in the end. And this will look really nice over that dress that I wore. So I really like that. You should be able to get this on their website. I will link to it down below and they do it in lots of different colours. 
But I was quite happy because when I asked what increments they sold in, he said, once you've passed half a metre, you can have whatever you want. So I got 1.2 metres because I know that is enough for me to make this sweater. So that's that one. And then I also picked up this. This was from a company, I think called Dots and Stripes. If that's wrong, I will link to it down below but she had some of the cotton waffle fabric that we sold at first for fabrics and I have this jumper in grey. She sold it in pink, which we never had. We never got this colour in and I just absolutely love it. So I got one and a quarter metres. She sold in quarter metre increments. So I got one and a quarter metres of that to make this jumper. I just loved it. And Lynn, lovely Lynn, who is one of my fellow sew tuners, she also bought this. So we're going to be twinning. I think I'll just use this fabric for the neckband and everything because trying to get a rib fabric that matches is going to be really difficult. So yes, love that one. And then the only other fabric I bought was for Taylor and I bought it from Jenny Stitches. I was really looking forward to meeting Jenny. She runs an amazing fabric shop in Barrow. I am really hoping to get to it at some point because I'd love to see everything in a shop but she just seems like such a lovely lady as well and she really was when I met her and I spotted this fabric and I just thought it would make something really nice for Taylor. I love the tones of this like the earthy kind of colours like the brown and the navy blue and the olive green just it, yeah I really liked it. It's a poppy loop back French terry called Monsters. And I wanted a metre of this, but Jenny had 1.4 left and just gave me it for the price of a metre, which I thought was really kind of her. So thank you, Jenny. I haven't decided what to make with that yet. It might become a onesie, like I mentioned earlier, like a hooded onesie or a matching like tracksuit bottoms and hoodie or something like that, because I've got 1.4 metres. That's loads to play with. I think Taylor will really like that. So that was everything that I bought until I was leaving, <laughs> until I was leaving the show and I just happened to spot these Christmas cards on a stall which I thought were really cute. So I went over to look at the Christmas cards. This one and this one. And then the lady there was a really good salesperson and managed to sell me a cross stitch kit. <laughs> I did say at the start of this year I wanted to start cross stitching. And then I saw Ruan's catch up video the other day and she was sharing a couple of cross stitches that she'd finished and they were beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And she also said her serious readers light had come in really useful for doing her cross stitch. So I thought, let's test that out. Let's buy a cross stitch kit and let's test out the serious light and see if it is amazing at cross stitch as well as lighting up everything else that I do. So I bought this. It's from a company called craftysmith.com and I just had to get this one because Taylor loves sloths. He says off. So <laughs> off. And it's just adorable. So he's going to love that. So I'm going to make that for Taylor. And I've got a time limit because that has to be made obviously within the next few weeks. I'm going to really give that a go and Ruan's going to give me some advice on cross stitching please. <laughs> but yes, you get everything you need in there to make this lovely little off. <laughs> so that's my plan for the next few weeks to work on that on an evening maybe when I'm watching something on TV. So that's my haul. That's everything. That's everything that I've been buying. Whew. I hope you've enjoyed that and seen all of my lovely things. I'm hoping to bring out a couple more videos in the next week or so. As I say, my November makes is going to be coming up within the next week. And then, yeah, I need to think about what I'm doing for Vlogmas. I won't be doing an everyday Vlogmas. I'm really sorry. That's just not possible. <laughs> I have a two-year-old and I don't know how anybody with a two-year-old could do an everyday Vlogmas video. <laughs> if you can hats off to you you're amazing but it's just we just can't do that but I will try and put out some vlogmas content for you I've got a couple of advent calendars the prim one and the Kylie and the machine one so I want to open those with you but also show you some of the lovely Christmassy things that I'm getting up to and yeah if you'd like to see that do let me know down below but obviously I don't want to commit to a schedule because that's when 
it becomes a chore and I don't want to let people down. So yes, anyway, I'm going to go now. I'm going to go and read my book and light one of those candles and have a little bit of chill time before Taylor wakes up from his nap. So thank you so much for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed seeing what I've picked up recently. Do let me know what was your favourite thing of mine that you saw today. I'd love to hear that from you and if you don't already subscribe to my channel I would love it if you could. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon in my next video. Happy sewing! Bye! I spotted... <laughs> Oh no. But I will try and be put. Blah, blah, blah.